Are you considering HubSpot Service Hub, but you're not quite sure what's inside and whether it's gonna suit your needs? Let's take a look in this video. Welcome to HubSpot Hacks, where we help you get more out of HubSpot. HubSpot Service Hub is one of the newer hubs that makes it possible for you to really strengthen that customer experience after sales, after marketing. Again, we get into that customer service piece. It really is strongly supported in their flywheel model, but what it allows you to do is have that customer service operational part of your business then tied to the contacts that already went through the sales and marketing process. So in this video, I'm going to demo the key features that you're gonna find in Service Hub. Keep in mind, there's four different levels, free, starter, pro, and enterprise. They have varying price points, and some things may be available in some and not available in others. If you have questions about that, drop a comment below and we'll make sure and get back to you. So let's go ahead and dive in. HubSpot Service Hub is going to be found similarly to what you've seen in the past with this menu here at the top. And the two areas that you'll find the Service Hub features in are going to be conversations and service. Now you do get access to workflows in Service Pro and Service Enterprise, so there will be some functionality there. We're not gonna dive into that, but I will talk about that here in the video. So let's actually start with some of the key features that you find in Service Hub and why people find it to be helpful. The first thing people always think of when they think of service and customer service is going to be those inquiries, the support, and that's what we're gonna find here in tickets. So tickets are going to be a way for you to take that inquiry from your customer, something that they need to be, you know, answered about or they have an issue and whether you use this now or a third-party system there's ticketing who gets assigned to a ticket and then how you go ahead and answer that is going to be all here in the system so i'll start with this example on the support pipeline so tickets are just like any other object in hubspot where you've actually got the central object itself that has fields that go with it and then a ticket can be linked to a contact a company and various other things here in HubSpot. So before we dive into this ticket flow, let me show you what a ticket looks like. So for the purposes of this demo, we've actually just got some very um, kind of generic fields, but we've got a ticket description, we've got a ticket owner, we've got a created date, and then we've got things like priorities. There are lots of other properties you can use on tickets. We just chose to only display a couple here on the right, on the left-hand side. You can choose to make custom properties. So let's say that you actually wanna categorize your tickets or you wanna add maybe a modifier, or you don't like the word priority, you'd rather have a class system. That's all possible with custom fields here in tickets, and then that's going to make it possible for you to run workflows against that property. So let's say whenever a ticket gets to high priority, you automatically get that um, note out to a manager. That's something that's possible all inside of Service Pro, most likely in Service Enterprise. Now we've got a similar look to other pieces in HubSpot where you've got activity on tickets, notes about tickets. On the right hand side, we've got what I talked about here. You can tie it to a contact, tie it to a company, you can tie it to a deal. And then we can also have attachments. Think about it being like a screenshot of someone's problem. You could put it here in the ticket record so you can easily see that depending on who's working on the ticket. Now, if I go back to that ticket pipeline, when you have Service Pro or higher, you get a chance to have multiple pipelines. So you might actually have a pipeline for one product or multiple products, or you could use it, as we've demonstrated here, as an onboarding pipeline. And that onboarding might be something that when a deal closes, it automatically creates a ticket. We've got a video about that if you'd like to actually explore that. But this makes it possible for you to use the Service Hub for more than just maybe support inquiry processes. So what we're finding with HubSpot is be creative in how you might be able to use it because if this drives efficiency for your team, heck yeah, let's go ahead and get that installed and let's use Service Hub. So again, that is going to be tickets. And just like in deals, you can use tickets and you can see them two different ways. We actually have, um, let's go back to the support pipeline. We've got the table view. You can choose what columns you see. And then we've got the Kaban view here as well. So the next thing people think about when they think about Service Hub, feedback surveys. So customer service, very, very important. How is the customer doing? What are they feeling about their experience and how would they rate us? Now, a lot of times you might use a third-party tool, or again, this is inside your customer service software, but here inside of Service Hub, it's baked right inside. So if I actually go to this draft, we've got customer support and you've gotten a, a sort of template email that will be here. And this middle part actually isn't able to be edited because the scores here from this survey then are aggregated and can be reported upon. And you can use the triggers and serve in Service Hub to send this survey out automatically when something happens. You need to decide what that something is, but you could actually trigger that here. 
And then you've got fields that allow you to customize what the company says, who it's from, and then again, those greetings. You can even use personalization tokens from their first name or wherever to personalize that message and make it more likely for them to follow through. So we've got additional things if we wanted to create um, a different type of feedback survey, a thank you survey, a recipient. So again, all of these different types of things are things you can customize here. And then we've got an automation piece. What do you want to happen when they rate you as a four, if they rate you as a seven, notify managers, so on and so forth. This piece, super powerful. Again, very high level, but I think you'll find a lot of benefit in this if you're exploring a service hub. Now, the next piece that people think about when they think about service is knowledge base. So if you have common questions that are coming into your company, instead of constantly having the same responses to people, why not direct them to a knowledge base? Where they can easily get their question answered and has an opportunity to you, for you to even lay it out consistently so that that is something that represents your brand well. Now in HubSpot, this knowledge base, it actually comes based on a series of articles you create. So if I look at the articles here, how to create a new article. You don't have to be an engineer or a technical person to do this. You just type the title of your question, a subtitle if necessary, and then the answer. And then we've got settings just like we would in a blog article in terms of what is the URL trail. We've got a category, categorize it. So if people search by category, it might be in onboarding, it might be in technical questions, again, whatever your software is. And then we've got keywords, what would type someone type in in order for them to find this question. So again, pretty straightforward, you'd publish that. And then once you have articles, you can choose the template that you want to actually use. And here, if we look at design, I can choose a different template based on what I want to achieve. And here we've got examples of all of those. It's really easy for you to preview what your um, knowledge base would look like using the preview. And then also we've got a mobile preview, super important. So many searches are on mobile these days. That makes it possible to easily use this template and then get started. So we're gonna cancel that out. But again, pretty straightforward. Now, the last piece in this uh, knowledge base area is you can actually decide what you want to have for your URL for the knowledge base, so that's customizable. And then you can also choose if you want your knowledge base to be public or private. And by default, Google will not index your knowledge base here in Service Hub, but you can actually turn that on if you would like it to be indexed. I know HubSpot is a company, I use their knowledge base a lot, they have it indexed, but again, you could choose to have that be not indexed if you want. And that again is the default. So the last piece that we typically see with, um, actually let's jump over here, with service is going to be this, actually I lied, there's two things left. Uh, customer portal is going to be a newer feature inside of HubSpot that makes it po possible for you to create an area for your customers to log in to check the status of their tickets. So if you have, let's say, like this morning I had a cable repair service come to my house because we were having issues with our cable box. And so I might've wanted to know What's going on with this? Where am I? I called in last week. This would make it possible for me to log into my customer portal, look at that ticket and look at the status that it's been assigned as well as maybe any notes. Again, this is a piece that's optional. You don't have to do this, but if you do, you can actually choose to have a specific domain. You can then decide what your access is, what contacts get access to it. So, so on and so forth. This is a really new feature, but something that HubSpot's pretty excited about. And then we've also got the conversations over here. These are our last two pieces. We've got inbox, which is going to be the shared support inbox. So if you think about today's world, people can send us messages from Facebook, from Twitter, from email, from chat. And if they don't go into one central place, we end up having a challenge and keeping track of those and knowing who's gonna respond and then centralizing that information. So the inbox actually makes it possible for all of those properties to then be funneled into one support inbox. And you can manage that here, assign it to people, and then choose to close out conversations. You can also link conversations over to tickets, have all of that kind of talking to each other. So for inbox settings, I can choose to then go ahead and, and um, set some of my channels of what I want to actually have coming into the inbox. And then this is fairly new. This is only when we have specific levels of HubSpot, but we can actually have SLAs or service level agreements of what happens when this department does this, how does that impact the rest of the organization? And so that's gonna be what an inbox is. The last piece, chat flows. Chat flows in Service Hub are going to be a way for you to have a live chat, but then also a if this, then that scenario. So if somebody happens to have a question and you give them three options and they click on one, then they go to this place. If they click on a different option, they go to this place. So again, just like what it sounds like, chat flows, and then chat flows, create contacts, 
that then you actually can assign to people to follow up here in Service Hub. So that's it. That's Service Hub in a nutshell. Super powerful. One of the newer tools available from HubSpot, but really something that we need today to retain those customers, really build those relationships and make it easy for people to find and get the answers to the questions that they might have about your products or services. For more tips, tricks, and how-tos, hit that subscribe button. And if you want a deeper look at Service Hub for your organization or your specific scenario, please reach out and let us know. Comment on the video or reach out and send us an email. We'll see you next week.